Trust the ride. Lately where I've been, and honestly something hard to speak on, is the resentment you feel while in the journey of your purpose. After mustering all of the willpower and strength to have this tunnel vision to my desires, you realize you've built a momentum that is no longer dependent on you pushing the needle or your forcing to get you where you need to go. How I can describe it best is when you're on a plane and you're driving on the ground and creating speed. This moment in my life feels like when the wheels have officially picked up from the ground. The wheels have fully picked up from the ground and you're like, holy sh- This is new territory for me. I've put in so much work to get to a specific place, but none of that comes close to the same energy that it takes to fly. The air is just so new. This level of lightness was never a necessity for me to have before. The things that I once thought grounded me have become a liability, because at this point, I just don't need the ground anymore. And if I could make it to where I'm supposed to be on land alone, God would not have given me wings. Welcome to the Raw and Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. It's been a full year of consistency, and I'm starting to feel a fatigue. June was my official year as a consistent YouTuber. I made it my mission to post and post in hopes that it will bring me further along in my journey, which it has, a better understanding of what it takes to build a platform, which I clearly see, and also different ways I can help others on their journey if I have the tools to. Rich reminds me, I know we've spoken about creating a video about how to shoot my podcast and upload and take my thumbnails and things like that, but to be honest, if I brought that to my feed, I'm afraid it will change the algorithm that I'm in orbit of. I'll potentially attract a population of people who want more information on how to do that, and because that's not the bulk of the things that I talk about, they'll come, but they won't stay, and that will do something to my analytics. And I personally want to keep this podcast and this channel about the topics that are really helpful to change the heart posture. And if I dive deep into that, I have to go deeper and deeper because there's so many things to learn. I opened my schedule for one-on-one -on -one consultations about social media strategy, different tools that I can bring you, different links, different tips that help me stay in reach of the algorithm so I can show up on your explore page. There are different things that I researched that really when I actually implemented those things, it made a very big difference. So I want to be able to share that for you. I want to be able to create a package that helps you specifically with your niche. And I really want to be able to take your voice and amplify it in ways that you would like. So the link is in the description below and I would love to help you. But Moving on. In this new era of flight, on the outside I'm wearing it cool, but on the inside, I'm panicking. I've never been in flight before. I've only ran. You know, I'm a pretty okay runner, but taking flight is different. And in the midst of all of this panic and worry and fear of crashing, I feel God in the back of my mind saying, but you're not the pilot. I'm the pilot. You're just assistant too." The pilot, you know, you use your voice to calm the passengers on my flight to ascend them in spirit. Let them know the altitude and when it's safe to take off their seatbelts so that everyone can feel safe and know that they're carried by me. And I've done so much work, or so I thought, that when I'm put in a position to receive rest or just sit, I can't trust that things are actually coming to me without my forcing and steadfastness. When you grow up seeing women do it all, it's all you know, and people use it as a strength, but it can also be a curse. It's hard to admit that you truly can't, 
because doing that involves you also admitting that you lack the foundations of building trust with a higher power. This is a consequence of having no choice but to show up and be strong, because oftentimes when we don't, it completely falls apart. I spoke about my worthiness through productivity a little while ago, and this moment felt like because it didn't require me to do more, the lack of things to do made me feel unworthy. I'm such an all or nothing person, and I have such a very strong mindset. My ego is telling me, if you don't need me in the ways that my ignorance knows to be needed, I guess I must go somewhere else because I don't know how to sit still. But if I move around too much, I miss the opportunity of learning and seeing everything that I should. How could I make myself a mouthpiece of something I'm not making myself in the presence of? And being in the cockpit of God's plans is an honor. And just because I don't know all the buttons and where exactly we are from how high up I've been doesn't mean I'm incompetent or unworthy of being in partnership with our father. I was scared when I was doing all of these things and I didn't know what it was supposed to look like. So it automatically seemed like I was doing it wrong. It was really just that the territory was so new. I didn't know what to make of it. That's like a kid in the backseat telling their parents that because the trip is taking longer than their normal routes, they must definitely be lost. I had to realize that it's okay if I don't know. And just because I didn't know didn't mean that I was lost. Because the mission and the purpose was never truly mine to begin with, and I have to let go of control, especially when it's taking me places I never dreamed possible. Sometimes... Especially if your purpose is to serve. It can feel transactional. The spirit that I have to serve is something that I was born with having. It's how I was made. So sometimes I do it in selfless ways that when I think back to myself, there's a part of me that's human that resents myself for doing some of the things. I don't know why sometimes I do what I do. And I wish I could stop myself from judging how I walk in life. But it's really part of my destiny and it all feels strange, but that's the only way that I can feel comfortable with the things that I do. And it's not that I can't see the lack of reciprocity or the selfish ways people use me for their own gain. But if I acknowledge it in other people's ways, I wouldn't be in the frequency of seeing myself for who I am and the responsibility that it is to be me in spirit. I'm not saying that it's not hard. I'm saying that because I pick my hard, I'd rather have the weight of what comes and the expectations of spirit than anything else. Because I already existed in a hard life outside of my purpose, flailing in the abyss, I'll do the hard things if it meant I'm being molded by something greater than me. I was watching the Nina Simone documentary on Netflix the other day because the frequency of her voice carries so much resonance. I like hearing the realness of her story and viewing it from my spiritual glasses. There was a woman with a divine path. Ever since she was a child, she was set apart. So she's viewing life from this glass box. And it makes sense because of the way God preserves the people he wishes to use. And when it unfolded in the ways that God designs, she fought it. It ate away at her almost. She wanted a freedom that was honestly, in my opinion, given to her through something which no force could be taken away, which is her music, her gift. But because the reality of the times she existed in through the civil rights era, the ways that God wanted to use her in this life wasn't more valid than the ways she wanted to be seen and used in this life. And to be worked, but to never be freed, to have the glory of favor, but never contempt. It could drive anyone mad and angry and feeling helpless, hopeless. To have a voice that brings the world to their knees, but to only use it in a way that others decide. The controversy of living through the civil rights era and watching your leaders and the people who bring hope completely exterminated and to expect an artist of the time to not sing a song that's truly in their hearts about it 
this would make anyone angry. I guess I resonated so much with her because, much like her, I didn't want to become a caged bird that sang of liberation but never really experienced the freedom of liberation in my own life. Last week I made a video that was muted for copywriting reasons. It happens. It's a part of the job. I love YouTube. There are guidelines for a reason so that every creator on different levels feels supported and respected, and I respect that. But the stress. The stress and anxiety that I had about sharing a message that I truly feel, if the concept was digested well and understood, would liberate the mind and soul of so many completely just silenced for reasons outside of my control. It definitely humbled me. When I tried to get back on Premiere to try and edit it again without the music, my hard drive was acting like it completely forgot its purpose and everything I had and felt was as if it didn't happen at all. But if you want to listen to the audio, it is on Apple and Spotify. Which is exactly why I chose to spread my voice across platforms, because obviously it's needed. But it's a normal video, much like one I've made before. But in all honesty, I think it's what is said in the beginning that may or may not have gotten me into the good trouble. Not that what I said was wrong. It was that maybe it was so right, it could incite a liberation of change that makes us outside of the dense frequency of being controlled. But that's why I'm here. The good trouble. But here's the thing. I've always been this way. I've always been the one to see them all first and being ostracized because people can rarely handle the truth. It's always been me against the grain in the root of things that most don't have the discernment to see, and I've suffered so many consequences because of it. What you see is me as a content creator, but in reality, I and the many people that are doing what I'm doing are at the front lines of an interdimensional rescue system between the power of the subconscious mind and the ego of the flesh. And I make content that brings awareness to your spirit as a ruler with the truth of your godlike abilities to change your circumstances. Most of us have been herded like cattle into lives that feed a system of shallowness so much that they don't even know who they are. Sometimes we land ourselves in places that just don't resonate in our spirit and we need the strength and the tools to free ourselves. Anyway, all of this resonates because there is a gene in us that wants something deeper, wants something more liberating. The issue with that is for so long, people have been using platforms to speak about things that further distract us from our truth because it's a safe topic for systems who seek to control. If I'm talking about lip gloss and Lululemon codes and breakups, it's great. But my mind exists in a future where none of that even matters anymore. And you're going to need coping mechanisms and ways to find community and be vigilant in your pursuits. I see consumerism honestly as an uncontrolled willpower, greed, and a lack of contempt. But it's praised. They want you to keep feeding yourself the lies of having it all to make up for the fact that maybe some of us are empty in spirit. And I share all of this because I think bringing a sound of resonance is a part of my purpose here. And also to reassure the people that are in the dimension to hear and receive the things that I'm saying that you're not crazy. A lot of sh is hitting the fan. So we're all in the same boat and have the discernment to see that something isn't right. The higher you rise, the more responsibilities, the more you have to lose. And if you're being true to yourself 100% and existing outside of the silent behavioral rules set on us, the more of a danger it feels you become in this world. I look at a lot of brilliant writers and liberated thinkers of the times before, and I feel it's my due diligence to push the torch forward for the new ways we can heal and free ourselves. Because if we don't, I mean, if we don't choose to bring thoughts to the surface that challenge the world as we know it for the better, 
how can we define the ways that we're existing in this life as being truly free? Some of us were born with this fire in our chest to be this way. It sometimes scares me because it's bigger and more mighty than I am, but I'm too far into the deep to just not be who I've been from the very beginning. So I guess we'll just see how it all pans out. Don't take life too seriously. Um, a couple of days ago, one of my bosses gave me a note during work because everyone could tell that I was just not being my normal self. And she gave me a note on my shift that said, if I could say three things about life is that it moves on. And it, there's just something about um, seeing those words and realizing how tightly I held on to the expectations that are completely unrealistic to my life as well as others and the people inside of my life. And yeah, it's a real thing. We do have things that we want in this life. We should take our dreams and our goals serious enough to have them and pursue them. But at the end of the day, you know, we have one life and we should be enjoying most of the moments that we have here because it is a blessing. Forget about the timing of things. There is no perfect time. Detachment will be your North Star because it will release you from the judgment of unmet expectations. If you're working, you're moving forward. And if not, you're still moving forward because all there is is a select pocket of time and what you choose to do with it. Something that scared me when I was young and didn't know myself well enough to know what it is I actually wanted to do was how long it took me to do something. I spent so many years in the brainstorming process and I realized how much time I spent there. It frustrated me into constantly staying in motion. I judged myself for not meeting unrealistic expectations in the past. That's just like not investing in real estate in 2005 when I was only in elementary school. But to be real, when I think about it, all of the time spent outside of knowing what to do, I was still in a season that was needed for my development. The things I've lost, the mistakes I've made, were all to get me to see my present moment a lot more clearly. And if I could give myself more advice, or to anyone more advice as a sister, I would say, laugh at yourself more, or laugh at more things. Because you're just still here, and it's a miracle. Life moves on even if you find yourself in a life without the people you never dreamed of living without. You still have a chance at experiencing life to learn and live through mistakes. If I judged myself for everything that wasn't perfect, it would be a slap in the face to every person without another chance to wake up every morning. All you can do is your best. Your best won't be 100% every day, but having a fighting heart to try by waking up in the morning is truly enough. I remember when I was young, I was very young, and I was experiencing this deep, deep, deep level of sadness. I used to do the prayer, now I lay me down and sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I would just like pray that God would take my soul. Because waking up and existing in my life was just so not fun. It wasn't good. Um, and every day was like this disappointment. Every day felt like something was a punishment to me. And now I'm existing in all of that. Because that's, that's how long my journey has been with my heavenly father it's like i have been in this constant battle back and forth um for a very very long time and now i'm so happy that i was woken up every single day because through that struggle i got to truly understand the value of having a life having a journey having struggles and all of the growth that happens you know so i wish you could feel the gratitude that i have for being able to wake up every day with the troubles and the worries that I still have, but um, realizing the ignorance of a child not even wanting this and feeling how blessed I am that even when I wasn't worthy and ungrateful for the life that I have had, 
I was given it anyway. And, um, sorry. I just, um, I love you guys. And I don't want you to give up. The only way out is through. Don't allow yourself to go to waste. And it sounds so cliche. I see that, you know, in little memes all the time. It's, you know, it's one of those things. But it truly, it truly is. You know, we have no control over what happens really in our lives. It's a blessing that we get to make decisions and have the free will to do and say and be. And if we never take it, you know, what are, what are, we, what are we here for? I feel like there's so many things that happen in our life that distract us from the power that we actually have to make a choice. And um, I hope that... Uh, the stories that I share with you today and the way that I express my feeling of just, you can hear it, it's just all over the place, but it's so real. I hope it allows you to feel less alone and like you are on a boat with someone that is going through it too. Because this world is getting crazy and crazy by the moment, okay? We're just gonna stay tuned. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening to my ramble again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video.